Of all the asset classes getting hit by the spike in yields, closed-end funds have been among the worst. Here to talk about what's going on with closed-end funds is Rob Shaker, Portfolio Manager for Shaker Financial Services. Welcome, Rob, and tell me, how bad is it for closed-end funds right now? Well, it, it's been quite dramatic. Uh, one of the aspects of the closed-end fund space is that during periods of selling that are accompanied by fear or, or large sentiment swing, uh, you'll get a double whammy in the in the sector. Uh, so, for example, in this case, with the bond sell-off, you not only have the inherent NAVs or net asset values of the bond funds um, losing value, in this case, somewhere between 3 4 5 6%, uh, but you'll have an additional discount widening of another 6% in this case. So you really get into the double digit losses in uh, fixed income bond funds that are closed then. What is it about the makeup of closed end funds that causes such volatility when rates move up? Is it the leverage? Well, the leverage is part of it and, and the leverage will affect the net asset value. But I think even more important than the leverage aspect of the closed end fund is the discount aspect of the closed end fund. Uh, it's an inefficient market. Um, it's actually what drew Shaker Financial to the space in the first place. The Probably the largest aspect in this area is the fact that they're thinly traded. Uh, much of them have limited liquidity in, in times of uh, great fear or forced liquidation. So it doesn't take much to move a market. And when a sentiment comes in very highly on the sell side, you can have these large discount windings across the board. You can imagine. This has been a bad one, but it's not something that we are unfamiliar with. We had one in July of 2011 and most recently uh, after the election, both with bond funds widening 6 or 8 percent. Well, Shaker Financial Services has long beaten the S&P. In light of the sell-off, is there a type of closed-end fund that you're focusing on right now? There are a lot of types out there. Yeah, there's, I would think it's a hard time to really make some fundamental analysis in terms of uh, where you want to put your assets in closed end funds. For example, the traditional knowledge that you know the longer the duration, the less attractive it'll be. To the extent that you feel that that's already sort of been overdone in the space, you may actually have more value there. Fortunately, at Shaker Financial, we're a bit agnostic to those types of fundamental um, calculations and move more to where the discounts show us we have value. So currently we are looking into spaces such as the high yield, the preferred, um, and the senior reset loans where we see um, good value. Any funds in particular or are there any funds that you're avoiding? Well, in general, in a situation in which we have a sell-off, what we try and do at Shaker Financial is double collect on the way back up. So what we're trying to do is as funds recover from the 6-7% widening, which they typically do over a course of a week or two, uh, we try and capture the first wave and then move back into the second wave. The, the first wave typically being funds that have traded at historical premiums um, that are now at, at discounts. For example, if you can get a PIMCO fund that is historically traded at a premium such as PDI, PFL, PFN, or PKO, um, that would be probably that first wave. Also, we like some BlackRock stocks. Um, BSU, ARK, BHL, and uh, some of the John Hancock, well, all the John Hancock preferred. All right. Thanks a lot, Rob. Okay. Well, thank you.